Okay, so let's get started. There are four people today. Okay, so um, uh, good morning, uh, children. Good morning. Um, let's get started. And okay, number we did some problems on sets, relations, and functions, but we could not complete it. Uh, there are a few problems left out. I think on the functions mainly, I think we could cover up to sets and relations, but I asked you to try those problems in functions. So, Yarla, try Paninga, Poda Murjida. Please raise your hand if you had tried and you know completed those problems. So, nobody has tried. I tried uh, to complete it, sir, but I also had uh, a WPT and cycle tests in the school, so I was not able to complete it. Hmm. Okay. What about the others? Okay. So it is not going to be enough. If you just sit in the class, go and do something else. Okay. Unless you practice yourself, you, know, you are not serious about IIT. Okay. So with that, let me start. Okay, so this is the next problem. Show that the relation x y equal to minus two is a function for a suitable domain, and find the domain and the range of the function. Okay, the relation given is x y equal to minus two. Then, it, so the question is, for what domain is this a function? Okay. Find the domain and range for which this is a function. X, Y equal to minus 2. So, Akshaya, you tell me what did you try? Did you, you said you tried some problems, right? Did you try this problem? Um, uh, yes, sir. So, how far could you go? What did you do actually? What did you try? Uh, so, x y equals minus 2 i did y equals minus 2 by x like that hmm. very good y equal to minus 2 by x right so you if it is a function you write it in this form y equal to f of x so you have written it in this form y equal to f yes, of x right so so there is a, a domain and there is a range so for which uh, domain and range is this function valid so that is the question okay so you think about it for what all values of y or what all values of x will this relation hold so the moment you say y equal to minus 2 by x you will tend to write something what is that It's an even number uh, and uh, it's an integer, sir. Not only integer. Suppose it is uh, y x equal to 1.5, then y equal to minus 2 by 1.5. Is it uh, defined or not defined? You can still define, right? Sir. Right? For integer or non-integer, rational. So, suppose y equal to root 2, then also it will be valid right x equal to root 2 we can find out y y equal to root 2 we can find out x right so so when this is not valid you see something like a minus 2 by x you will immediately tend to write right Plus, when x is equal to 0, this kind of uh, function is undefined because minus 2 by 0, is that defined? No, right? 
so this will be valid for all values of x all real numbers you can put whatever number you know irrational rational integer you know for uh, everything this will be valid except x equal to 0 so that means the domain is R except 0 and we have to represent like this, minus 0. Okay. So, okay. Now, what is the, what are the possible values of y? If the function is minus 2 by x, now you think and tell me what values y can assume. Okay. When you put various values for x, what all values y can assume? That is your range. Anybody? It's, it's very similar. So the moment you say y equal to minus 2 by x, it is also x equal to minus 2 by y. So x, uh, that means when x is equal to minus 2 by y, uh, you know, it will not be defined for y equal to 0. So y can never take a value of 0 in this kind of uh, equation. Like y equal to minus 2 by x, whatever value you put for x, y will never become 0, right? Can you make y 0? Can you think of some value of x when y will become 0? No. Okay. But for any other value, we can find out a suitable x uh, for other, all values other than 0. So range is also same. Okay. Is that clear? Okay. Let's go to the next problem. Okay. Find the number of all functions and one to one functions. From the set uh, 1, 2, 3, up to n to itself. So, did any, can anybody solve this? Even if you did not try before, I don't know if anybody tried this. Akshaya, did you try this? No, sir, I did not. You did not. All others are not even responding. I don't know if they are there or not now. Uh, Sundaris, and you, you joined. Uh, you have also joined. So, there isn't. Did you try yes, this sir. problem? Can you, can you solve this problem? Find the number of all functions and one to one functions from the set 1 to n to itself. Sir, I don't see this question, sir. Where you didn't see the question? Okay, I think you were not in the previous class. This is for 10th pass out, right? So I think you were not there in the last class. You attended for the Yes, sir. Interaction screen, Yes, sir. Ah, okay, okay, right. So this I had sent out, but I have put it only in the group for uh, no 11th, not for the 12th. That is the reason why you are not seeing that. Okay, uh, but can you look at it and tell me where, how can we solve this? All others also, please think. Please think and tell me where, how we can do this problem. We have to count the number of functions. Counting the number of functions is a common problem. You will, because functions, if you want to you know, make it like a problem, this is one easy way. Counting the number of functions from A to B. And money. So you will get, in uh, JE, you typically get problems of this sort. Okay. So you have to... Uh, 
know this how to count okay so count the, find the number of functions and one to one functions from the set 1 2 3 1 up to n to itself let me draw a diagram first so to itself right first let's count the functions okay so what is the definition of a function i we discussed it last time itself and you all should know what what is a function of all kind of relations we can put but what does a function mean so do so all know that you no know, function is a subset of a relation so what are the conditions for defining something as a function defining a relation as a function there are two criteria right i told last class itself and you should also have read it in your books number 1 if you define an element uh, if you if you define a relation by excluding any of the element in the domain then it is not a function all the elements in the domain should be included in the relation that is number 1 and what is number 2 for any element in in the domain there should be only one element where by this what i mean is for any element in the domain it should be mapped to only one element in the codomain like one should be mapped to one or whatever but it should not be mapped to two elements one is mapped to one as well as one is mapped to two abdin irundadana that is not a function so a function means for any element in the domain there should be only it should be mapped to two okay i'll write it like this any element in the domain be mapped to two to only one element in the codomain okay so these are the two conditions if all elements in the codomain need not be covered if some elements in the codomain are left out it is still a function okay so this is a condition okay the, what is the uh, next there is another question in this no that is what is an on how many on to functions on to means okay now no element in the codomain also should be left out that is on to first we are counting only the functions all functions so only these two conditions so satisfying these two conditions how many mappings can be made so you take any element one okay it should, it can be mapped to n values any any of the n it can be mapped right one can be mapped to one one can be mapped to two one can be mapped to three there is no restriction it should be mapped to any one element that's all so one should be mapped one can be mapped in n ways right okay now one has been suppose one is mapped to something okay now how many ways two can be mapped again two can be mapped to one also okay one this is allowed 
one getting mapped to one and two mapped to one is allowed. What is not allowed is only one mapped to one and one mapped to two. That is what is not allowed in a function. But this is allowed. So that means two can also be mapped to one, two, three, four, n elements. For every combination of one getting mapped to something, two can be again mapped to n elements. Again, three can also be mapped to n elements, all elements, right? N times. What is this value? N to the power of n. Typically, in this case, uh, the domain and the codomain both have the same number of elements. Suppose domain has got yum elements, codomain has got n elements. Then what is the number of functions? m to the power of n because each element in the m can be mapped to n elements so it will be n into n sorry it's it's n, n to the power of n. so that is n to the power of n so if the domain has got m elements, codomain has got n elements, then the number of functions is given by n to the power of m. So number of elements in the codomain to the power of number of elements in the domain. Okay, this is the formula for uh, counting the total number of functions. So what is the formula for counting the total number of relations that we already saw? So how many relations are possible in this case? Let us say how uh, that is not asking the question, but I am just asking you because we have already seen that. So, what will be the number of relations? Anybody? We discussed it in the last class how to count the number of relations. Akshaya, you want to answer this? I'll, I, I'm trying to do it, sir. I will, once I finish. Okay. So it will be two to the power of number of elements in the <clears throat> cross product okay if you uh, or cartesian product so if the cartesian product is going to have n into n element okay so then total number of relations will be 2 to the power of n into n or 2 to the power of n square so 2 to the power of n square total relations can be defined out of which n to the power of m or in this case n to the power of n will be functions okay next let us see how many onto functions so this is a formula for counting number of relations 2 to the power of number of elements in the cartesian product number of functions is n to the power of m where n is the number of elements in the codomain m is the number of elements in the domain and now the next problem number of onto functions So this is a simple case where it is easy, easy to count the number of onto functions. Okay. Because onto means even in the uh, domain, all the elements should be covered. 
sorry, one to one. So the question is not on to one to one functions. Okay. Okay. So a number of one to one functions means uh, suppose one is mapped to one, then two also cannot be mapped to one now. Because two is also mapped to one, then it is a function, but uh, not a one-to-one -one function. So the first element you can map it in n ways. Then the second element can be mapped only in n minus one ways. Then similarly, next element. Suppose two elements are mapped. The third cannot be mapped to those two. Only the remaining we can map. So and so on. So what is this? One into two into three up to n. We call it as n factorial. Okay. So this is the total number of one to one functions. So please remember this. This is the simple case of here. Here also there are n elements, and here also there are uh, n elements. Suppose it is different, then then also we can see. Let's see. Let's see if you can say this. You 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 say this. This is n. Yum. So, how many one-to-one -one functions can be defined in this case? So let us say in this case, there are two cases, yum less than n, yum greater than n. Because yum equal to n, we have already seen. So that will be n factorial. So that's, uh, that's already seen. So yum less than n, yum greater than n. Suppose yum less than n. So let us say there are 10 here, and there are only 5 here. So there are 10 here. And here there are only five. So in this case, how many one-to-one -one functions can be defined? Think and tell now. Yum ways, sir. Yum ways. Okay, now let us try to map. So one I have mapped to one, two I have mapped to. Let us say I I have now I cannot map to two, so I can only map to something else. Let us say I map to three. So three I map to let us say five. Four I map to one, two because I cannot map to something that is already mapped because then it will not be one to one, right? So five, so there is one more left. Five I will map to four. And now six, where I will map? Six cannot be mapped, right? Only the first five elements can be mapped because there are only five options available in the core domain. Right? Suppose m is less than n, that means core domain is smaller. then one to one function cannot be defined at all not even one function because the, the all elements in the domain needs to be mapped but there are not uh, sufficient elements in the core domain to map so it is impossible right so if m is less than n we cannot define any function no, not any function any one to one function Okay, so suppose let us take a case where there are only five here, but there are ten here. Okay, so let us do, probably draw another diagram. So 
So now four domain is bigger. Let's say only eight. Hmm? That much only I can write. So now m is greater than n. So this is your uh, n. This is your m. Okay. Now we have to define one-to-one -one functions. So let us say one can be mapped in. Now how many ways? First element we pick up. How many ways we can map? Eight ways, right? Next element. Now one is gone. So seven into six into five into four. So this is your number. Number of yam. Yeah, minus yeah yeah n plus one okay so which is equal to we can say m factorial divided by n factorial okay mm, wait 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 m factorial divided by m minus n Up to m minus n plus one, it is there. So that means n minus one. So this this reduces to n minus one. So this is equal to m factorial divided by n minus one factorial. Is this clear? Think about it. It is not rocket science. It's just simple arithmetic. Okay, counting the number of functions. You know? And uh, it is uh, generally there will be problems on this. You know, count the number of functions, number of one-to functions, number of one-to-one -one functions, like that. Okay, number of relations. If you did not understand, please feel free to stop and ask me. Is it you are finding it hard? Please let me know. Okay. I'm not uh, hearing anything at all from anybody. People are sitting quiet. I don't know if you are understanding or not understanding, or uh, are there or not. Okay, so you have to read the book. You have to understand the concepts. You know to solve any JE problems. So I've been repeating this, OK? So let's go to next problem. Function f defined from a to b, where a is 1, 3, 4, and uh, b is 1, 2, 5. And function d, g is defined from 1, 2, 5 to 1, 3. OK, so this is the function f, and this is the function g. So write down g of f. So g of f, so you first apply the first f, OK? And then whatever value you get out of f, then you map f to g. So that is your g of f. So I'll, I'll show you by example. So the g of f is covered in your book, right? So it's done, right? This chapter has been completed, right? This is your set A. This is your let's say set B. 
So these problems can be easily solved by drawing the diagram. Okay. This is what set C. So what does it say? Function f is one to two, three to five, and four to one. This is your f. When your function g is one to three, two to three, five to one. This is your function g. Now g of f. So first you apply g. Sorry, f, and then you apply g. That is your g of f. So let us say g of f of one. What will that be? See, you find out. First of all, uh, apply f. Okay, from A to B, and find out what is the element in B that is math, and then apply G for the corresponding element from set set B to C. So if you take one, okay, so in set A you take one. So what is it mapped to, to in B? What is one mapped to, to in B? Two, sir. Two, and then. That two, what is it mapped to in G, in uh, three, set sir. C? Three. So that means G of F means first you 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 find out F and then you apply G on that uh, F of X. So that means one is mapped to two, three. Similarly, you tell me what is G of F of three? So three is mapped to five here, and then five is mapped to one, right? So that means g of f is three to five to one. Similarly, three is that. Uh, therefore, g of f is. One is mapped to the three. Write down g of f. That's it. Okay. One is mapped to three. Three is mapped to two. One, four, comma three. That's all. Is it is it clear? What is g of f? Yes. Okay. There are only two more problems. I hopefully we can finish them. Okay. If the function f r to a is given by f of x equal to Uh, x square by x square plus one. This function is defined from R. Means all real numbers. That's what is your R. Okay. So here is a. We'll put R here and a. Okay. So a has got some values. Okay, we don't know. That's what we have to find out. Find a is the question. Is given by this mapping is given by f is equal to x square divided by x square plus one. Okay, so here it is given that all real values are included, and if you apply, that means. For the x, you put all real values. All real values means minus large number to plus large number, including zero. All real numbers. 
if you do that what all values you will get for a so that is the question calculate can you you have to calculate and tell me if you put various values for x what do you get for f of x take a minute calculate and tell me you put a large x value minus large value let us say minus 1000 then you put zero then you put plus 1000 Let's say let's say we put a large minus value like la minus thousand. So that's all right. Substitute. That's all. This is ten power six divided by ten power six plus one. So ten power six by ten power six plus one is going to be some nine 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 something. Okay, so you can see that, right? Or uh, okay, you still go on increasing the value of my uh, my instead of thousand, uh, you put f of minus ten thousand one lakh. It will still become ten to the power of uh, you know some huge number, ten to the power of twenty uh, divided by ten to the power of twenty plus one. It will be again point nine 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 nine. But will will it ever reach one? It will not, because always this, however big this is, this is one more than the numerator. Denominator is one more than the numerator. That means it will go on increasing, but will never touch one. Okay. Now let us see what is f of zero. Is equal to zero. That means as we come closer to zero, like f of one, it will be one by one plus one half. So as very high values, it is nearing one. But then, then it as we approach zero, it goes on decreasing. At f of zero, it becomes zero. Then again, f of one will be. Half, and then it starts to increase because you know this is x square is a positive function. It, it again it's a symmetric positive function, so f of thousand will be also same as what we saw for f of minus thousand. That means this function. Like this. Let's draw it on the side. So as we, when x is large negative, it is like this is your one. When it is large negative, it is somewhere here. Okay, all along it is here, not touching one. Close to one, but then it becomes zero here. Then it again increases. At zero, it becomes zero. Huh? Pardon my drawing. It goes on like this. Okay. That means it varies only from zero to one, but does it touch one? No, but it touches zero. It it can take value of zero when f of zero is equal to zero. So then, how do we write this ranges?
it doesn't touch one but it it includes zero but doesn't include one so this is your range okay Did you all follow this? Yes. Yes. Okay. Sir. Okay. Good. 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 Okay. So let's look at the last problem. This you think and you tell me the function from R to R f of x equal to x square is it uh, injective but not surjective or surjective but not injective injective and surjective neither injective nor subjective. You know, you know what is injective and surjective? I think it came in the previous problem also. I written here, no? Surjective equal to on to, injective equal to one to one. So you have to tell me. Whether this function is uh, one to one or on to or neither uh, one to one nor on to, what is it? Just do some examples. Try to put various values of no. x and c. Uh, on to four. On to. Okay. Okay. On to means uh, surjective, right? So you are saying surjective, but not injective. Is that what you are saying, Sundaresan? Yes, sir. Yes. Surjective, but not. Surjective, but not injective. Okay, it's not one to one, but uh, on to. Okay. How many agree with that? Sundaresan and uh, who else said yes? Think, think a little more and tell me. All of you, you tell me what. What do you think? Not, not, not thinking. You have to objective. Calculate and tell me what it is. It's a little tricky. You have to think. Okay. Okay. Here you have R. Here also you have R. R would mean, let us say, uh, minus infinity to infinity. Okay, so all kind of values, some huge values, zero. So here also it is going to be like this. This is your. And the function is f of x is equal to x square. So for all these values, where will it map in in the codomain? Minus infinity to infinity. So let us say minus one. So what is minus one square? <coughs> one, sir. Plus one, right? So minus here somewhere here minus some one million. What will that be? Square of that will be. Somewhere here, right? Very large positive number. So let us say here plus one. Where will this go? Same one, right? So how is it mapping? Is it uh, one to one? On to? 
just draw it like this you will see that is it one to one no sir why so two domain values approaches same codomain correct two domain values like plus or minus two domain values go to the or mapped to the same element in the codomain that means it is not one to one is it on to yes sir you still saying yes yes sir so all for build hmm so all codomain values should be mapped for on to right all domain values should be mapped even for any function on to function means all co codomain values should be mapped are all codomain values mapped no sir no sir no because none of the negative values are mapped right because the function is f of x equal to x square it cannot assume a negative value right for any real value of x x square cannot be negative so is it on to no sir no so it is neither injective neither injective okay okay so let us stop here i have more problems from uh, you know iit to discuss the je problems uh, but let's stop here and uh, you uh, let me know your feedback is is it going fine or you able to follow or uh, uh, is it are you comfortable with this way of uh, you know this class so we'll continue in the next class okay will more problems on uh, sets functions and relations uh, but what is it that you need to do to be able to even try these problems you have to read your books read your examples the same thing that i've been telling you in every class and keep you know thinking about various uh, scenarios you know how this is you know map to how that is mapped you should keep thinking about it okay so please do that you know come better prepared so next class i'll send you the questions uh, before and next class will be on monday right so so we will discuss uh, more problems on monday so but, but tell me are you comfortable with this sir okay 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 so any any other questions feedback is ellarku mudichaach illaya in the chapter unga class la ellarku in the function sets relations mudichaach illaya yes sir yes right so please go read your book again okay look yeah. at these problems and then uh, i'll send the next set of questions probably i'll send it beforehand i'll send it today itself uh, so then uh, you look at those problems you know in that context you can still again look at the book revise you know uh, every problem you should see think first what concepts are applicable let it sink in your mind for some time use the opportunity to go back to your book look at those concepts that way only you know you can uh, develop your knowledge in the thorough knowledge of the concepts in this uh, whatever chapter okay so we'll meet in the next class huh? so is this going fine or finding it difficult i am not getting a feedback you know not not by the participation so i want to hear you know are you comfortable not comfortable Should I go slow or what else we should do? Okay, fine then. So let us uh, wrap it up now.
I will send the questions for the next class. We'll discuss in the next class, which will be on Monday. Okay. Thank you all. Yeah. Bye. Thank you.